Faithful Catholics, remember their departed loved ones and pray for the souls in purgatory. But Catholics are not the only ones who are interested in the dead, it seems, because alongside the wonderful practice of praying for the holy souls, we find another quite different practice. I'm talking about people who claim to be able to communicate with the dead through things like mediums, seances, and psychics. And I want to talk about the difference between those practices and the Catholic, indeed the Christian, practice of praying for the dead. So occult practices are nothing new. They existed in the Old Testament. Sorcerers, soothsayers, these individuals that existed in almost every society claim to have a contact with the dead. Nowadays, present-day mediums, psychics, a lot of them are just frauds. What they're doing is made up, a charade, a performance. Maybe it's recognizing hints that the person is giving them and then following on from the hints, responding to suggestions and, and that kind of thing. Often we find individuals that are, that are preying on those who are grieving and in emotional distress and are willing to give some kind of superficial comfort at the price of 40 pounds an hour. But while most of the stuff nowadays is fraudulent, Almighty God condemned necromancy, communication with the dead in the Old Testament. So there does seem to be a possibility of these things actually occurring. The Jews are told not to have anything to do with it. If they were just harmless rituals or a way of grieving or just some kind of entertainment, Almighty God wouldn't have been bothered about condemning it. Almighty God instead forbids the Jews to approach them in any way whatsoever. And so some Protestants say that Catholics fall under these condemnations when we pray for the holy souls in purgatory, when we pray for our beloved dead. But in fact, you know, the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church condemns divination and communication, illicit communication with the dead. Let me read the section from the Catechism. All forms of divination are to be rejected, recourse to Satan or demons conjuring up the dead or other practices falsely supposed to unveil the future, consulting horoscopes, astrology, palm reading, interpretation of omens and lots, the phenomena of clairvoyance and recourse to mediums. All these conceal a desire for power over time, history, and in the last analysis, other human beings, as well as a wish to conciliate hidden powers. They contradict the honor, respect, and loving fear that we owe to God alone. All practices of magic or sorcery by which one attempts to tame occult powers so as to place them at one's service and have a supernatural power over others, even if this were the, for the sake of restoring their health, are gravely contrary to the virtue of religion. End of quote. And so the catechism, the teaching of the church, is saying that there is a difference because it wants to condemn all of the above, all of the above. So how did we how did the church define occult practices? First and foremost, it was talking explaining that these occult practices treat God as if he can be bypassed. They they wish to manipulate his order and access the souls who have gone into the next world, kind of access them bypassing him. And so this is a this is really the the key point. The thing that distinguishes the true and holy Catholic practice of praying for the dead from divination and seances is that the Catholic practice, which has occurred from the beginnings of Christianity and which was a Jewish practice, you know, we see it in Second Maccabees, that practice is not about manipulating or bypassing Almighty God for secret knowledge or influence. Not at all. In prayer for the dead, God is the means of communication. He is the one we are in contact with. And according to his good pleasure, we benefit the holy souls in purgatory. That's the key difference. 
that in prayer for the dead, we are going through God, with God, in God. It is, you know, it's not some kind of special secret means of bypassing the authority of Almighty God to try and reach out to departed souls. Not at all. God is the Lord of life and death. We acknowledge that when we pray for the holy souls in purgatory. And while Almighty God can permit a saint or a soul in purgatory to appear to someone to send a message, he doesn't normally do that. I mean, he does sometimes, but if they appear, it's because of him. It's because of his authority. But above all, Almighty God wants us to trust him when people get taken by him into the next life. Almighty God won't be manipulated by some person with a few tarot cards or crystals. But you know, there are persons, spiritual persons, who are only too happy to play along with the woman with the crystal ball. Only too happy to take the opportunity to bring confusion and deception to those who are vulnerable and in the process of grieving a loved one. Of course, I'm speaking of the fallen angels, the demons. They know our lives, our history, and all the details of our beloved dead. And they are only too happy to mimic the responses of deceased relatives. And they do this because they know that the second someone has got to a medium, they've declared, I do not trust Almighty God. I will not respect him as a Lord of life and death. Instead, I will try a different way a way that ignores his command in order to get access to secret, hidden knowledge. And so, if ever there is such thing as a genuine, authentic psychic or medium, we can be sure that that individual is not in communication with our departed loved one. That is certainly not happening. They are communicating with an evil spirit who is bent on destroying our souls, making us doubt God and stopping us from keeping the Catholic faith. You even find mediums who claim to believe in God and that kind of thing. But that makes no difference whatsoever. Because God has told us again and again, he will not be manipulated by crystals. Instead, he wants us to trust him, to love him, to keep his commandments, and to pray for those who we love, who have passed away. And so obviously, if you have been involved in any of these practices, make sure to mention them in confession before receiving Holy Communion. And so what should our attitude be towards our departed loved ones? Well, we should, as the church has always insisted, we should pray for them. We should give thanks to God for their lives and we should pray for them. In some cases, we think of relatives who died holy deaths, those individuals who lived good lives and were faithful to their Catholic faith. We pray for them, even though they already may be in heaven. We pray for them because God will always reward our generosity and will give graces and mercy to other souls, souls who are still suffering in the purification of purgatory. In some cases, we think of relatives who did not die holy deaths, who lived lives far away from the Catholic Church, who never went to confession, and perhaps even rejected God. We still pray for them. We pray for them because we do not know what happened in those last moments of their life. And we know that even if, tragically, that person died in mortal sin and is now in hell. Some other soul, someone who made it into purgatory, will benefit from our prayers and the masses we have offered. And finally, in some other cases, we think of those many individuals who live neither as exemplars of the Catholic faith nor away from God and rejecting his church. We pray for these people. Undoubtedly, they're in purgatory. But by our prayers and penance, the punishment due to their sins can be remitted in the sight of God. Everyone in purgatory is on the way to heaven. They died as his friends. They died in the state of grace, but they died with small sins on their soul. And they need to be purified from these sins and from the effects of their past sins, because nothing imperfect can stand before God's presence in heaven. Once you're in purgatory... God helps you to become sorry for those small sins you remained attached to. And he helps heal over the damage that your combined sins have done to your soul. Your soul that was once clean on the day of its baptism. And in God's mercy, 
He allows those remain, who remain on earth to speed up this purification of their loved ones. They do this by praying for the holy souls, having masses offered them, and gaining indulgences for them. We're in the same family as those holy souls in purgatory, and God accepts our prayers and penances on their behalf. This is the way we show our love for our departed dead, and this should be our consolation. That we are helping souls on their way to heaven. The temptation to resort to so-called mediums and psychics can be strong when a very dear one has died, but this is not God's way. The departed souls cannot be dialed up by pressing the right buttons. That isn't the way God has established things. You can be absolutely certain it will not be our departed loved one at the other end of the line. Instead, God wants us to pray for those who have died, who are now in purgatory, so that we may be even closely united to them, that our bonds with them in the mystical body might grow, so that when, God willing, we are reunited with them, our bonds with them will be even stronger, having aided them through their sufferings in purgatory. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.